In this example, we're going to decide which type of sampling is being used in each description. The first situation, we have a soccer coach who selects six players from a group of boys aged 8 to 10, then seven players from the group of boys aged 11 to 12, and finally three players from a group of boys aged 13 to 14 to form a rec team. Notice the key here, which is that the coach has divided the group into segments based on their ages. So there's a segment from 8 to 10, a segment from 11 to 12, and then a segment from 13 to 14. And from each segment, the coach has selected several players. So after dividing into segments, the sampling could be either stratified or clustered depending on what happens next. But the fact that we're choosing a couple from each group makes it stratified. If we chose a couple of groups all together, that would look more like cluster sampling. So this first one is stratified sampling. Now generally with stratified sampling, we select the same number from each group. In this case, the coach didn't do that. He selected six from one group, seven from another, and three from another. But generally speaking, with stratified sampling, we select the same number from each group. In the second part, there's a pollster who interviews all human resource personnel in five different high-tech companies. And this may be hard to see at first, but the fact that this pollster selected five companies leads you to think that they looked at all of the companies that were out there and thought of each company as a group, and they selected all human resource personnel from a few of these groups. So by dividing them into groups, again, we can think about either stratified or cluster sampling starting that way. And then because the pollster selected everyone from a couple of groups, that's cluster sampling. If they had selected a few from all the groups, that would be stratified sampling. But the fact that they selected a few full groups makes it cluster sampling. The third one, a high school educational counselor interviews 50 female teachers and 50 male teachers. Notice again that there's a, a separation of categories, and so the teachers have been separated into male teachers and female teachers. They've been divided into groups, and then from those groups, some have been selected an equal number from each, which again looks like stratified sampling. Next, a medical researcher interviews every third cancer patient from a list of cancer patients at a local hospital. And the key here is that term every third which is what identifies this as systematic sampling. Systematic sampling is where we have a list like this and we pick some step like this, like three, and we check every third, or we could pick every fifth or every tenth. Whatever it is, that systematic moving through the list is what makes this systematic sampling. The next one, a high school counselor uses a computer to generate 50 random numbers and then pick students whose names correspond to the numbers. Notice how there's no division into groups. There's no systematic process. This is the full population of students, and we just select random numbers from that full group. And that's what makes this simple random sampling. That's kind of the simplest version where we're looking at the full population and using a random number generator to just select without any division into groups or anything else. Lastly, a student interviews classmates in his algebra class to determine how many pairs of genes a student at a school owns on the average. Notice here that this student is looking for information about the whole school, but rather than looking at a full student list and selecting randomly from them, or selecting every third student, or even dividing them into groups, the student just asks the students nearby, the students that are in his class, next to him, which makes this a convenient sample. 